I thought it would be interesting today to talk a little bit about a fairly common condition that is seen in about 2% of the population uh, that is called mitral valve prolapse. It's a uh, condition that has to do with one of the valves in the heart where one or both uh, leaflets of the valve become uh, abnormal and sometimes that can lead to leakage of the valve which we call mitral regurgitation. The purpose of the valves, including the mitral valve, uh, they basically work like a uh, one-way door system uh, to allow blood to go in only one direction and uh, they're supposed to seal tight, seal shut and not allow uh, for any back uh, flow of blood into the left atrium in the case of the mitral valve. Sometimes they are uh, deceased, sometimes they are uh, degenerative or cause the cords to be a little bit too loose and stretchy. So these valves then uh, sometimes lose the ability to close uh, tight allowing for the mitral regurgitation. And of course uh, most patients with mitral valve prolapse have no symptoms. Uh, they're doing well. If they have any mitral regurgitation it will be trivial or mild. But uh, sometimes the defect in the closing of that mitral valve can be significant enough to cause uh, quite a bit of MR, mitral regurgitation. Those patients require surgery. Here at Holy Cross Hospital uh, we have a dedicated valve clinic and we have a number of very well uh, trained cardiologists with interest in, uh, in valve disease, particularly uh, mitral and aortic valve. The advice I have for patients is if you have any symptoms that could perhaps relate to mitral valve prolapse, you should check with your physician, uh, preferably a cardiologist. In regards to symptoms, the symptoms can be very nonspecific if they are present. Most of the times, patients with MVP, mitral valve prolapse, have no symptoms. Sometimes they have symptoms that are in disproportion to the amount of prolapse or the amount of mitral regurgitation. They may have some atypical chest pains, dizzy spells, uh, a little bit of anxiety. Uh, so those patients that uh, we classify as having mitral valve prolapse syndrome sometimes can be helped with some uh, advice to exercise and avoid uh, caffeine. Uh, uh, sometimes medications like beta blockers help to slow the heart rate down and sometimes those things do help. The patients that have true significant mitral regurgitation, those patients need to be obviously worked up and studied. Some patients have no symptoms and yet have severe uh, leakage of the valve. We follow standardized uh, guidelines for uh, timing the intervention uh, of surgery in those patients that may need surgery. Sometimes monitoring the patient periodically with the echocardiogram uh, becomes the main treatment until those patients uh, progress to a point of needing surgery. In regards to mitral valve surgery, there is mitral valve replacement. Many patients with mitral valve prolapse are candidates for mitral valve repair and there's different methods to do repair. The important message I want to convey to the patients is they need to make sure they see somebody with the experience, uh, an expert surgeon with experience in repairs, an expert institution who is used to take care of patients who have gone through these type of operations. Whether it's a simple repair where we put a, a ring uh, around the base of the valve that's called an annuloplasty or a, a situation where the valve gets literally trimmed and sewn back together to a more adequate uh, closure so that there's no more regurgitation or perhaps an operation that may not involve a classic median sternotomy where we do that big full incision and the chest gets open uh, but we can address that sometimes with minimally invasive uh, approaches and those are all interesting uh, approaches very uh, there's there's advantages and disadvantages um, but the main thing is to go to a place where they offer all of these procedures so that we can decide what is best for that particular patient.